talking of putting rest into practice, we're now going to invite someone who's building a company based on this uh, idea. So if Hector, who's a member of our club and he's done some research this month, so if you've got a few more minutes, Alex, to stay with us, sure. it'd be great to have you. So Hector, come and join us on stage. And then we're going to have a breakout uh, rooms where everyone here is 160 of you got a chance to break out and, and have this discussion with each other. And then we're going to return back here to the stage uh, half an hour after that and meet the founder of uh, Kidscape Charity. So Lauren Seeger Smith will be joining us. And Kidscape is a charity which we supported with some of the book vouchers from this month that you donated. Um, it's uh, working on tackling bullying uh, with children and their relationship with technology. And, and so looking at that whole challenge of stress and rest with kids. So we're going to talk to Lauren after that, after our breakout. But welcome, Hector. Hello, uh, Hector, Alex and Ben. Um, so, Hector, tell us, um, first of all, what you're working on. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about the data you gathered. For sure. For sure. So thank you so much for that, Alex. I was actually rereading rest this month uh, for, for the rebel book club so and i also read shorter last year so big fan oh, but um uh thank you so i'm i'm currently the co-founder of a startup called unplugged and the basic concept is we put cabins in the countryside mm -hmm. and when people go and stay in our cabins they literally padlock their phones in a box we give them a map and a nokia and we leave them to it for three days and the, the concept came uh, last, uh, so 2019, this is, believe it or not, a pre-pandemic startup, but um, I was working for a tech startup with my co-founder, um, Ben, and uh, we were kind of early employees and did the whole international expansion, high growth. And after about three years, I just got a bit burnt out with it all. Ben had left at this stage at another Ben. And... Um, you know, it was kind of that and balancing a London social life and you know, flying around the world. And I just had a real kind of dissatisfaction with life. Uh, and that just just kind of built and built and built. And you know, I've always been an, an optimistic person, but I noticed I'd, I'd really lost lost the kind of joy for life. And uh, seeing this, a, a friend of mine, also called Hector, recommended I went to a silent retreat in the Himalayas. Um, and I initially laughed this off. You know, I was the kind of guy who spent my Saturday afternoons at the pub watching football, not, you know, sat cross-legged in a Buddhist <laughs> temple. Um, but yeah, I, I just, you know, got more and more burnt out. And eventually I thought, yeah, why not? You know, what, what have I got to do? So I got there in, in September 2019 and um, it, it was 10 days in this, you know, temple on, um, on top of a mountain just above the, the city where the Dalai Lama lives. So it was incredibly spectacular. Um, and almost the best thing about it was at the start of the retreat, they take your phone off you and, and just cut all <laughs> connection to the outside world. Uh, and you spend the next 10 days um, you know, learning about Buddhism and meditating, but, but, but offline. Um, and very cliche, I, I came back from that and quit my job uh, a week later and um, was kind of uh, mulling what to do next. And I heard about these this kind of tiny house movement in other countries. There were some, some well-established players in the US and Australia. And um, I just thought that, that would be a fantastic vessel to, to kind of do this. So I was speaking to, hmm. to Ben, um, my co-founder, and he, he's not the kind of guy you'd find at a, a silent retreat anytime soon. And we were talking <laughs> about how that there's still a lot of stigma around these things, around kind of ret uh, retreats and, and meditation, uh, and they're really not that accessible. Um, and so much of the benefit is just, you know, just getting people offline so, so that they can deliberately rest, right, and getting them into nature. Um, so, so that was the end of uh, the end of 2019, just before the world changed. So, luckily, we we got our first cabin ordered just before the pandemic hit. Um, we got it built during the first lockdown, and, and we launched perfect timing last July. Had a fantastic response. Lots of um, kind of publicity. You know, it was obviously very uh, hot topic so um, we'll, we'll kind of fully book through the winter and now it's really about scaling up so we've got two more cabins that went up last week um, and another one coming in uh, coming in May in, in Hastings in Kent so that one's got a, a sea view so so really yeah really scaling it up now which is exciting Ooh. there we go and, and Alex is like when's it coming to California <laughs> exactly <laughs> and, and Hector so so you currently ran a, have been dropping loads of advice and what you've been learning as well uh, throughout the month with our members. Uh, one of our members is one of three nights stay in your cabin. Um, who is who is it is, and is that person here tonight? That's a, that's a good question. So it's, it's Ellie Travers 
Well, it's not. It's not me or Ben or Alex. It's, it's not. You, yeah, <laughs> I, I turned down your bribes so after it's, all um, this work. <laughs> but uh, but Ellie Travers, so congratulations, Ellie. We will be in touch in the in the next couple of days to to get that all set up. Ellie has won a Nokia and a cabin in the <laughs> Um Enjoy that, Ellie. And and Hector, tell us about this, the survey data that you collected from all of us. Yeah, for sure. So so really interesting. Thank you for everyone who filled it out. We had two hundred and five responses. And 65% of us um, are spending more than three hours a day on their phone. So that's the kind of headline statistics from, from the screen time. Uh, so it's a 3.72 hour average. And of, of those 205 people, there were just five of us um, that had screen time of, of under one hour. So it's, it's really, really crazy to think considering, you know, 10 years ago, we were all on, or 15, we were all on zero screen time on our, on our phones and um you know, now it's you're talking hundreds of, of hours each um each year the fact that the survey took three hours to complete didn't it? <laughs> yeah that's true <laughs> was there anything else surprising that came out of it yeah so, so, so the other big thing is um just just kind of seeing the uh the numbers for, for pickups and notifications and just thinking about the implications of that so the, the average was 65 pickups a day which um, in the time you're awake is an average of, of every 15 minutes. And you kind of read about the switching cost that, that it takes. It takes 15 minutes to kind of concentrate once you've been distracted. Now, I'm sure some of those pickups will occur in a short period of time. But, you know, w w the, the basic takeaway there is we are spending pretty much all day in this kind of in-between state where we're, you know, we're not kind of fully present. We're, we're, we're switching between tasks. And you know we're overstimulated, and and the other one is, is the average notifications, which is 110 a day. So I mean, even over 24 hours, that's that's one every 15 minutes. And um, you know, m most of us do still our phones do still ping and buzz, and you know, do all these bells and whistles when the notification comes in. So on the rest side of things, which is great, we saw um, you know lots of people doing some very exciting things there. We had. 94 people referencing reading which is perhaps not surprising I'm, I'm sure that number is is actually higher um a, a good one was from either stacy kelly or kelly stacy it's, it's quite hard to tell with emails so I'm, I'm i'm sorry kelly or stacy but uh she said i i quit all social media best thing i've ever done now smashing through a book a week so that's that that's what we like just doesn't know when the, the events are on anymore but you know <laughs> reading loads yeah, that's it that's it and I just wanted to ask Alex, this data that Hector's sharing from our community, is it reflective of the uh, wider society in terms of relationships with our with our phones and technology? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, this sounds this sounds like a pretty standard sort of group of connected people these days. Um, so I think there were uh, there are some there are some great opportunities to um, you know provide provide services like sort of like yours, Hector, that you know, give people a conscious, you know, a conscious opportunity to break from this and very importantly, you know, to do something else. Um, there's a real different, I think there's a, there's a real psychological difference between telling people to, you know, just, you know, sort of put down your phones um, versus, you know, lock it away for the weekend where you can do these other wonderful things. Those are very different kinds of value propositions for people. Um, and so I think that, you know, it's, it's, it's great. It's great to have the second in the world as well as, you know, sort of as the first. Yeah, absolutely. And um, Hector, thanks so much for supporting us this month. Um, hopefully lots of cabin bookings as well. Um, and, and great to grab that data, which we'll be sharing back with everyone over the next week. Um, big thank you, Alex. And final question, which has been upvoted uh, in our community is, is the morning routines of which Ben mm -hmm. Sorgana here is a professional. Um, what's your <laughs> what's your current morning routine? I heard Seth Godin talking about his, which was like this intricate thing of like making coffee and chocolate from scratch before he'd barely brushed his teeth. <laughs> but what, it, what does your morning routine look like? And what's the biggest thing that uh, that sort of helps you um, set, kick off a great day? Right. So um, when I am when I'm writing, my morning routine usually starts between five and five thirty. Get you know, and sort of, uh, I virtually do nothing other than you know, sort of make my way to the sort of to the keyboard, 
um, and start writing. So for me, the key to a successful morning routine is set up absolutely as much as you possibly can the night before. So, you know, coffee, lay out the clothes, all of that. The fewer decisions I have to make before I start, uh, start writing, the better. Um, you know, I want to, what if I want to save all the processor cycles for words on the page? The other really important thing for me is is lay out what I'm going to do. So you know, I've got to post it like on the computer of the three things to work on. The final key thing is for me: stop work in mid sentence the day before, mm. um, and that's important because it's an old writer's trick. But essentially, what it does is it kind of primes your subconscious to keep thinking about the end of the sentence and also the next paragraph. Um, and you're more, and you're actually more likely to come at it in the morning with ideas that have been kind of percolating um, overnight. So some of my best writing happens much in the way that, Dal, you know, Salvador Dali talks about, you know, subconscious ideas being accessible during naps, right? It's not that you are creating the image of the painting, it's that you are recovering it from your creative subconscious. And so, and for me, um, and for lots of writers, stopping in mid thought is the way of sort of, of nudging that process so that you can access it the next morning. And Rizal, to, to echo your philosophy, uh, Alex said, I've just started to stop mid sentence and oh, she says she loves it. <laughs> she loves it. I look forward to reading shorter and it just like finishing in an abyss of like intrigue. Um, so we'll try and pause this as the thoughts are still percolating. We're going to go into our chat rooms now. So for those of you who are fresh to the Hop In and the Rebel Book Club experience, the sessions are on the, on the sidebar. We jump off the stage. We go to sessions, find a space, join with video or with audio, whatever you're comfortable with, and share, share your reflections and be aware that Alex may be hanging out somewhere in the background.